Hi, everyone. My name is Joey Katz. I'm the director of special programming with Boston Jewish Film. And thanks for joining us for this Q&A with some of the filmmakers um, featured in our 12th annual Fresh Flicks short film competition. Um, I'm going to go counterclockwise on my on my screen. So it might look a little different from you from you guys uh, joining us. Um, but we have uh, Ivan Kander from Minion Duty. We have Orna Rotenberg from The Artichoke Season. And we have Mayor Adelberg, who did The Rock Collection. Um, thank you all for joining us, joining me. Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, so um, first, I, I guess we're going to start with this. Um, it's interesting, just not even just the your three films, but kind of the whole program in general. Um, a lot of the films deal with family. Um, that was not an intent. That was not a kind of intention of the program. It's just kind of how it happened. Um, but all the films really, a lot of the films deal with family, and they're very personal. Um, to the point where I was thinking, like, are there elements of your own experiences that are reflected? in your films. Um, so um, I'll start with Orna on this. Um, yeah, so you see it right. It's based on my own true story. Um, I was born in Switzerland and then we moved to Israel in a suburb of Tel Aviv. And uh, it's not the same story, but it's a kind of story about a Jewish immigrant family that moved to Israel and see another like completely different aesthetics <laughs> from the Swiss Alp to the <laughs> poor neighbor. And um, yeah, I think that it's uh, impacts my life and impacts my uh, vision of uh, how I create things. Um, Ivan? Yeah, um, well, I don't, I don't think you can make a film unless you have some personal attachment to it, um, uh, that, at least in my experience. Um, in regards to this particular film, um, uh, the two sister characters are kind of like both sides of me, <laughs> um, and I fall somewhere in the middle of them, and I thought it would be interesting to kind of play out that um, dynamic via two separate characters, um, but also... I think there is a universality to uh, discussing grief, I think, in Mayor's film, I mean, as well, um, which I think is interesting. And um, yeah, I mean, I joined a synagogue that had minion duty, and I think this is an interesting setup for a potential movie, so. Yeah. Great. And Mayor, to you. I, I'll echo uh, Ivan's sentiments um, in that family is inherently necessary for um, filmmaking that that it comes from the soul um, and it, it just feels much more natural I think to make a film that's based on personal experience yeah absolutely I I didn't realize that you know some of these things were going to be so like you know intrinsically you know reflective of you know of you all I so I, I'm wondering, Orna, you know, Orna and then Ivan, to you two, um, since these are, you know, Orna, this is speaking directly from your experience. It's very, like, how do you go about casting basically a younger version of yourself in a way? And I guess to Ivan in that same kind of way, like, how do you cast two people that are reflections of yourself and mayor if they're if, if the main character in your film you feel is a reflection of yourself or any of your experiences feel free to jump in i'm going to go the same order um so for me it was like an, an evidence when i saw Saul Zimbabwe, the actress um she was so natural and like natural gifted and um first of all it's a, it's a funny story I um, found the boy in the story that uh, play Magnifier, the little boy that is kind of imaginary friend or a real friend, depends on your, the way that you, see, you, you decide to see it. And um, it's her co cousin and uh, they came together to the audition and just, I saw her and said, oh my God, 
this is so perfect. And also it was so natural between them uh, because they are like super good friends and from the same family. And I don't know, it was super easy to choose them, both of them. Um, well, I mean, I think the, the, the big um, secret that uh, people that are making movies don't like to tell you is that direction is like 99% just casting people. <laughs> um, and it's less to do with actual, like, I think there's this myth that a director comes on and like gets a performance out of an actor, but really it's just finding the right people for the role and uh, the story you want to tell. And in the case of this, I had a good idea of the dichotomy I wanted to represent between the two personalities of the two sisters. And um, I knew uh, the younger sister I had was familiar with her work so i was able to reach out to her directly and for the older sister i ended up using a casting director uh, which is the first time i've ever done that and um highly recommend that experience um for especially for if you're a younger or aspiring filmmaker i think there is this um there's no but usually there's no budget in making a short film so you don't usually have the money for a casting director um but i would argue that that's really money that's very well spent because um if you're just trying to cast it yourself you're not going to have the same connections or resources or reach um in getting a lot of good people to potentially read for it and um that allowed me to you know see some really amazing actors and really helped me um uh cast the film and the mayor if you if you have anything you want to add <laughs> yeah i i used a casting network for my film i guess, suppose this is a bit of a digression but <laughs> I, I needed someone my film is silent and i need someone who who could harness the, the raw emotions simply in their facial expressions and their body movements. Um, and so playing that in with, with the script and really understanding the emotions of the people that I was writing about to begin with was very important. I guess on that note, um, I think each of your films and then, you know, I want to give a shout out to everyone that can't, you know, <laughs> be here, but um, I think, um, it's interesting that you three are all here that uh you, the way the the dialogue in each of your movies or lack thereof um are so unique and they're so unique in how the char the main characters deal with you know extreme change um or you know or death or you know these momentous kind of traumatic um moments um so, you know, I, I feel like Orna, you know, the, in your film, you know, the little girl, like she, you know, she's dealing with these really powerful, huge changes in her life, but like, you know, through kind of this whimsical way, like, you know, in the way that children kind of deal and cope with extreme change. And, you know, Ivan, the way that the sisters, I think the, the dialogues are like snappy and quick and personal and you know it you really weave through you know these complicated emotions between the two sisters and you know and death and family and all these things and then mayor i think you might have the hardest task which is to not have dialogue and as you were saying you know your your lead actress she like can't say anything she deals with everything through her body language so like how you're all dealing with very heavy issues, I think, in your film. So like, how do you, how did you come down to the tone that you ended up going with and the dialogue or lack thereof in each of your films? Um, I'm gonna start with Mayor on this. So, the lack of dialogue was, was merely because I, I am terrible at writing dialogue. Um, okay. But it, I, I this was my first film since stuff that I'd made in, in high school. Um, it had been a long time since I made a short film. And uh, I realized that I needed to essentially return to the basics of filmmaking. So instead of focusing on dialogue and like a large budget and a red camera, I could just focus on the story and character. And in that way, writing dialogue was unnecessary um, to me for this specific film. I did have some dialogue in a few versions 
of the script, but uh, I realized it, it really conveyed a more beautiful and personal element if there was no dialogue. And the dialogue was also going to be specific and to the uh, person that this girl is memorializing. And I wanted it to be a more vague film that anyone could apply to, regardless of whom they had lost. Thank you. Um, Orna. I think that um, children are their own way to deal with traumatic events and, um, and also to process even in their life. And this, this film is really speaking about that, about how a child is dealing with a family trauma and how imagination could be an amazing tool to, to deal with it and also to process it and to become more like normal <laughs> after. And um, it's interesting because in my film, there is like the mother that she's dealing also with these traumatic events in another point of view. And she's denying the events and she thinks that the father will come back and uh, she prefers to stay in um, maybe in a superficial um, level. And the child, she's uh, going deep to, uh, she's searching for the father, you know, so in a psych psychological way, you know, she is really, and she process these events. And um, I think that it's what helped her to, at the end, like with the artichoke, she's uh, take off all the layers and stay with the heart. And this is the heart of the thing, you know? And then you can like feel things, be vulnerable, and um, and like the matter is stay with all the layers, stay with all the artichoke. And so this is the difference between them, maybe. Um, yeah, it's definitely interesting having this. Sorry, can you hear me okay? Or am I squirking yeah. up? Okay. Um, definitely interesting having this juxtaposition between Mayor's film and mine, because mine's like all dialogue and his is none. Um, and it comes down to just how you tell stories and the kind of stories you want to tell. Um, but I'm fascinated by good dialogue and I love the patter of dialogue and rhythm of dialogue. So everything I write tends to be very dialogue heavy. Um, and um, with this film, I mean, in fact, it's, it's so dialogue heavy that everyone tells me I overwrite dialogue to the point that I should stop. Uh, but uh, with this particular film, my goal was to start in that real Sorkin-esque pattern of dialogue and then transition into something um, that is tonally more serious and um, kind of make that um, tonal journey. And then so the, the second half of the film, there's a lot less talking, um, um, which, which I think is interesting because that's where it started to hit the bigger uh, emotional hook of the movie. Um, and uh, like, you know, so all the chitter chatter kind of uh, fades away. But yeah, I mean, uh, uh, give me two characters in a room talking and it's my favorite thing in the world. So. Yeah. Um, great. Um, yeah. I think going from, from dialogue, I, for some reason, you, I, I'm sorry if these seem like very basic questions, but like, I think like, you know, just like rudimentally, like structurally, like all of your films have such a unique, you know, story, like dialogue, lighting visual language like just each of your films is very unique and i'm just like i just like want to explore that and it's really like so my next question is about just the visual language of all of your films so like i feel like there each of your films really highlight kind of a very unique aspect of jewish identity um in very implicit and explicit ways um you know whether it's the relationship between people and the religion like being spiritual and being religious and you know how do you relate to those kinds of like the ceremonial aspects of that um you know whether it's going to a synagogue or kind of going to a cemetery but i think i think there is something very there's something very jewish about like an artichoke too. Like it, it, it's like artichokes are very intrinsically part of a lot of different Jewish cultures, you know, in Europe and Asia and, you know, all around the world. And like, and the experiences of 
Jews going from, you know, one place and then, you know, going Aliyah to like to Israel. Um, and I, I feel like each of your films tackles Jewish identity in a very unique visual language. Um, I'm going to go in the same order again, because I feel like, Mayor, your film is very like, all of your films are very warm in a, in a, in a unique way. Um, if that makes any sense, I feel like they all have a very unique warmth. Um, but I want to start with Mayor, if you want to touch on that last point or any of the ramblings that I've said beforehand, <laughs> um, because I feel like you, you are very like your film and how it is, you know, your character and how she's in touch with nature, I think is a very unique aspect of your film. Um, so if you want to pick up from there and then we'll go Mayor, Orna, and then Ivan again. Yeah, I'll just go along your thread of thought. Okay, thanks. There are a lot um, of different threads, sorry. Just gonna shut a door for a second. Okay, yeah, no worries. <laughs> Hopefully that'll be resolved. Can you still hear okay. that? Is that like too loud? No, it's, uh, it's all good, yeah. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, I really wanted my film to be warm because I feel like the the and which is contrary to nature in itself. Because mm. nature uh, is often colder, especially in the forest. It's like very cold. I don't know what to say besides that. It's it's blue. Yeah, so, yeah, and. Um, I felt the emotions that I wanted to portray were were, were warmer uh, than that. Um, but the the connection to nature, as you were saying, I think is essential to um, I mean, it ends up in a cemetery. A cemetery is always going to be in nature, of nature, surrounded by nature in general. There's also a certain element of of renewal that I wanted to bring to the film because it is about death, but it should also be about life. Um, so I very, I asked my director of photography to seek a, a cemetery that had those elements. She actually knew one right off the top of her head um, that was Jewish and we were able to use for free because I was on a, a um, had a good working relationship with the director of the synagogue that owned it. But um, but the, the journey from life to death, back to life, essentially, um, is what I really wanted to, to convey there. Um, and I feel like that is a warm relationship. Um, that also is conveyed through my use of, of Super 16 film that we shot on because I, I also wanted that to be raw and gritty. Um, not too gritty, but just imperfect enough that um, the imperfections of the character, the character's history, the character's relationships would come through as well. Right. Uh, Orna. Um, <clears throat> so... The frame and the aesthetic of a frame for me is super important as an art director and a, and a director. And um, I choose every little details in a meticulous way. <laughs> and for me, everything is super important from the wallpapers to the fruit that I use in the scene and the clothes, everything <laughs> and the light. And um, I think that um, this is a big part of my, uh, my cre creation. When I think about the scene, I think about, uh, first of all, the frame and the, how it will look. Um, for example, in the scene of the bathroom, the pink bathroom, I have a vision of a pink bathroom full uh, and a tub full of peas, green peas. So I have the pink and the green that I want to put together. So I, I was searching in old Jerusalem, a pink bathroom, <laughs> and it was not so easy <laughs> to find. And um, so it was my 
my vision for the scene and and also all about the vegetables in the, the film. I take a lot of inspiration in the market of Jerusalem. I was just, I think that ev everything starts there. I just, I was walking in the, in the shuk of Jerusalem and I, uh, I saw these amazing artichokes because it was the season and um, all the other vegetables. And I feel inspired just by them. And, and I think that the worms maybe in my film is more maybe, I, I, I don't know if it's the worms, but maybe it's, because it's full of a lot of details and and maybe it's give a warm impression because I don't think that like the the worms is like something that I try to create more a frame full of details. Um, with all my films, um, Everyone tells me that I'm not a great visual director, so um, it's probably not the highlight of what I'm, I'm doing. I, I tend to work with, I have a crew of people in DC that I work with a lot and um, uh, they know how to light and make things uh, look good. Um, the, the, I, did, I did wanna address this idea of like Jewishness on screen and like um, how that can be so different. Um, and also compared to the a lot of the stuff I watch, um, like I feel like a lot of, Jewish centric things that we're watching nowadays tend to be either focused on orthodoxy or set in Israel. Um, uh, I don't think there's a lot of like portrayal of just modern Ameri American Judaism, which is like what I grew up in Virginia, like a, as a reformed Jew, um, um, like that kind of, and now that I live in Silver Spring, Maryland, which is like way more Jewish than where I grew up. So I, I just kind of, the difference between the conservative American J Jewish movement and the reform American Jewish movement. And um, I think it's kind of, it, it was just fun to kind of reflect that on screen in a way that felt honest and real to me. Um, and also not necessarily, and regardless of whether, you know, your faith and your adherence to faith, um, I didn't want a negative betrayal of Judaism, um, um, which is like, I feel like a lot of, um, stuff I'm watching or uh, a I also didn't want something that was really sticky or um, felt really broad in its portrayal. I was trying to be as hyper specific as possible uh, and, and be true to that while also still telling an entertaining uh, story. Great. Right. Um, there you go. Um, great. So I think one of the, the things that's also great about your films as well as the other films in the program is I I feel like people don't fully appreciate sometimes the the medium or the the, the craft of short films themselves um, I think there's a beauty in kind of being able to tell a story with brevity and maybe kind of the struggle of trying to contain something within a, a certain amount of time or, you know, really honing in on what you want to say. Um, so I have one question and then I'll do a follow-up. So did, were there struggles in, you know, making, initially making your film and being like, you wanted to say a lot more and then you realized you wanted to cut some stuff out? Um, like is yeah i guess that, that that is the question like were there struggles in kind of deciding what to cut out and what to leave in um because again these are very you know personal films um i mean mayor your film is three minutes long but <laughs> um but yeah um i'll start with orna on this and then go ivan and mayor Yes, yeah, so for me, the editing process was a long process. <laughs> I edited and edited again and again. And um, it starts for, uh, from 16 minutes, and at the end, it came to nine minutes. Mm -hmm. So I cut a lot <laughs> to just stay with like the essence of what I want to say and how I want that it goes. And um, no, it was not easy to do that, but then when I did it I felt super that you know it's like you feel that it's true and this is the way that it needs to be yeah. and um, that the only thing for me that was important it was to 
um, to show through this like small short film the the fragility and the emotions of the character. So it, it was not easy in this short amount of time, but I think that sometimes when you cut things and you become precise, you just discover the essence, and then you you stay with the I don't know is the best <laughs> of them. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I love short films. They're also a very underwatched medium. I don't think a lot of people uh, in their traditional viewing habits watch a ton of shorts. So it's it's something I think that the mainstream public is super familiar with. Um, I think the trick of a great short film um, that separates uh, from like a good short film is this idea of can I create something that feels satisfying structurally and has payoff, but do it in like 10 minutes? You know, that I think that's like the really the real trick of any great short film because in, if anyone tells you about writing something, writing a first act is like the easiest part because all you're doing is setting up a conflict. You don't have to do the hard work of like figuring out how to resolve that conflict in a, a satisfying way. Um, so I, I used to screen a lot of shorts uh, for a curation website. And my biggest critique for most shorts is it felt like a lot of first act stuff. Like it would be like, oh, this is an interesting setup. And then it just, you know, ends, And then they'd be like, I'll make a feature out of it or I'll try to do something like that. So with my, uh, with Minion Duty specifically and with other shorts that I've made, my main goal is to have that like satisfying quote unquote meal. And it might be a small meal, but I want it to feel like you are going through a full character arc from beginning to end and trying to figure out a way to do that in 15 minutes is hard. And one thing I really admire about Mayor's film is like, it's like, it's super brief, but it's like, it knows it should be like, it, 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 it like it knows it shouldn't wear out its welcome. And it's, it's got like enough, it, it, it's smart enough to, to realize that and, and, and leave with a, a satisfying reveal, which is a really good format for like a three to four minute film. And I think he harnesses that, like that's something that only a short film can be, which I think is really awesome. Um, so yeah, it's just figuring out how can I leave the viewer feeling like they've went through a journey that feels satisfying, but do it without the luxury of time. That was beautifully articulated. <laughs> and I appreciate your kind words. Um, uh, when you receive a, a film file back from a lab, it comes in one file one just clump of a uh, just all of the footage put together and just like whenever the camera stopped rolling and started rolling. um so it was 13 minutes that came back from the lab and uh the film is three minutes and 15 seconds um so uh, there was a lot of extra fluff in the in the large file but um, I, I had intended it for be to be very, very, very short. Um, we were fortunately and unfortunately constrained significantly by a camera malfunction um, that left us with a total of about five hours to shoot the whole thing. Um, and we're like racing sunlight. Um, so I think it could have been longer. Uh, but I'm glad that we had those constraints that were not planned to make it the time that it came out to be. Um, and it, it really is, I think, all that needs to be said in those sh that short amount of time. Um, the There is a, a danger to creating short films and making them too long and losing audience attention because the characters cannot be as fleshed out in as in a feature. Um, and when you can only add so many interesting character points, you want to ensure that um, that your characters and your audience can, can see the characters as much as they should be and um, contrarily as little as they should be. Great. Well said, everybody. Um, so um, I'm on the flip side of this, and I think this is going to be my last question um, before um, we we wrap up here. Um, on the flip side, I think there's so much, you know, kind of going back to what we were, we started talking about. You know, there's there's a lot of, you know, heavy personal thematic material that you're all covering here. Um, 
in very, you know, genuine, authentic, personal ways. Um, and, you know, with a short film, as Orna was saying, you really, you do get the essence of, you, you end up with the essence of those emotions and those experiences, but um, are, is there still a part of you though that wants to explore those things further in whether it be a, a longer short film or a, or a feature film? Um, and I'm going to start with um, Mayer on this because you have the shortest film. <laughs> and then I'm going to go to Orna and then Ivan. Not in the format that I made it in and not about the same subject. Yeah. Um, I have another short film that I've written that um, that also deals with death, but it is a completely different um, different style. And um, I'm I'm very happy with with where I am right now with with this film and and where we left off with the with the characters um, because sometimes journeys are that short. Beautiful. Very succinct. I like it. It's, it's, it's the way. It's the way you got to do um, it. Orna? Um, so, yes, in a way, I'm working now in my, on my first feature film. And um, I mean, now I'm writing the scenario. It will be about three generations of women. It's also based on my own true story. And it also relates, um, it also relates about, like, about, with this short film and it will be three generations of women living in the same apartment in Netanya in Israel and about a crazy hair contest so I will let you know <laughs> great yeah I can't wait to see it that's awesome um and then then Ivan yeah so I I, I set out when I made Minion Duty just to make a good short film I, I, I didn't have any bigger aspirations than that I, again that whole idea of like I wanted to create a sense of structural payoff but after making the film, um, I've actually written those characters into a feature. Um, so uh, not the same story, but those characters and revolving around them. Um, so it's kind of weird how that evolves. Um, I think I got so uh, interested in writing their dialogue and their dynamic that I found a ton more that I could say about it. So Joey, if you've got any rich donors that want to give me money to make the feature film, <laughs> I would love that. I mean, I I think I'm in this I'm in this weird place right now in my filmmaking career where I don't have the money to make a feature film. I you know I I just don't have it, and all I can do is um, every couple of years make a short film that I finance myself. It means I can I can pay people to shoot for three days. I can't pay them to shoot for you know thirty days. So um, it's kind of this weird spot that I'm in. Um, and funding works very, I mean, the United system is really messed up, but the United States system is really messed up, but there's no, there's no government funding for, for creating art in this country. So um, you either have to somehow find uh, benefactors that want to lose money in making your feature film because it's a, you know, it's not a great financial deal or you enter into some kind of larger studio system. But um, yeah, I'm just kind of in this weird place. I, I got a, I got a good script. So if anyone wants to help me make it, I, I'd love to do it. <laughs> great anyone watching you know um let uh you, you can get in touch with me yeah, and I can connect you. yeah yeah <laughs> i i will i will do i i there's a there's a lot i will do for free money to make a movie so. <laughs> <laughs> well uh you know i can't wait to see everything that you're uh, all the films that you're all working on um in the near future um it sounds very exciting very happy for for all of you and can't wait to see what you're working on um so yeah, I, I think that just about does it uh, for us here. Um, Mayor, uh, Ivan, Orna, thank you all for being here, making the time um, and, you know, chatting about films. It's, this has been great. Thank you. And thank you for setting up this forum. And uh, and thanks for the, I mean, this has been a weird couple of years, obviously, because of COVID, uh, but um, it's amazing that there are still film, physical film festivals and it's, it's, you know, it's a lot of the ways it's the only people that are exposed. It's a lot, oftentimes the only way people are exposed to shorts is at film festival blocks of shorts, unless they're actively seeking them out on the internet. So um, from, from my personal standpoint, it's just a thrill that anytime anything you create is seen on a screen that's bigger than a YouTube window. So um, thank you for the opportunity. Um, it's not something I get often. So thank you. Absolutely, our, our pleasure. All right, um, yeah, I, th I think that's it. Um, 
Thank you for everything. It was great. <laughs> yeah, thank you. And good, and good luck to both of you. Hopefully we'll see each other or connect with each other in the future. Absolutely. Yeah, for sure. I will send you the link and I will also watch your film.